his expectation of seeing a parabola. I think it was Siddharth. Okay. So I will not talk about standard parabolic functions. The most standard of it is y equal to x square. Again, you should immediately stop me. Say, sir, please write domain and codomain as well. Say it. Say it. Please write the. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. Okay. Now, if I have to plot this function, first of all, I am not sure whether it is actually a function. I should call it as a relation. So, you should say, sir, stop using the word f. I mean, here. You should call it as a relation. You should say r of x. Why are you calling it as f of x? Are you sure that this is a function? So, from my experience, I humbly say, yes, I am sure. But from your side, you should always challenge the fact how are you using the word f? f for functions. Again, okay, don't go to some other uh, trajectory altogether. Okay. So, here. F should be used only when you know it's a function, else use R with a single delta. Single line. Is that fine? But since I know I have been teaching this for 11 years, now it's a function. Trust me for that. Okay? I will never lie. I will never give you a wrong information about this. Now, assuming it's a function, can we see the graph for it? I am sure you would have seen this umpteen number of times in the chapter of quadratic equations. Right? And even by closing your eyes, you can actually draw the graph for this graph. Yes or no? By the way, couple of things which I want to know. What does this arrow signify? It goes up and up, never stops. Right? Now if it never stops, how much is the span of this function along x axis? X is in element. I have already mentioned it, so you should say, sir, you already said the span is going to be r. Okay. But if I say, this is not r, but this is only, achha, there is some intervals that I would be denoting in our maths. So I will be giving you just a quick idea about that. This is also a part of a bridge because these small small things you should be doing. Intervals are basically from, they are subsets of the real numbers from where my function can be spanning. For example, if I say my function only spans between minus 1 to 1, so I will not draw this part of the function. So I will not draw an arrow, it will only stop like this. Then that interval would be called as minus 1 to 1 closed. Closed means minus 1 and 1 are included in your domain. Understood? What's the good name? Arpita. Arpita, you understand the meaning of the word closed. Closed means I include minus 1 and 1 point in my domains. Then what is the meaning of open then? Yeah. This is called closed. Open means round brackets like this. What does it mean? It means everything which is between these two is included in my x but not they themselves at the corner position. Yes, I am repeating this again. When you say open interval minus 1 to 1, everything starting from minus point zero, minus point nine 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 till point nine 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 that would be included. The end points, that is minus 1 and 1, they are not included. Are you getting it? So that is written as round brackets. They, they don't get confused with this. What is the difference between these three expressions? This is a set. This will only contain two elements. What are they? Minus, Minus one and one. This contains all the set of points which lie between Minus one and one. All the x value which lie between Minus one and one on the real number line. Including Minus one and one itself. When you write this, what does it mean? All the set of points between minus 1 and 1 other than minus 1 and 1 themselves. So for this, if I have to plot this graph, 
Dear students, please note, I have to put a hole like this. What does this hole signify? That exactly at 1, this value here is missing. It is just ending before 1. Now how before? It's a matter of limits. Right? That is a concept in calculus. So how before? Somewhere 0 0.99999 and how much 9 you want to add it. It is not attaining 1. That's what I want to say over here by putting a hole. Here also this hole signifies the same thing. It is just starting after minus 1. Are you getting this point? Alright. So if I write this minus 1 to 1 and I ask you if I ask you what is the domain of this function? Minus 1 to 1 set yeah, interval that is the domain of the function. As of now, I am going to talk about the entire real number. So, I am erasing this. I am putting the entire real number. So, this graph will now extend in both the directions like this. Now, the next question is, what is the range of this function? Y is greater than What do you think is the range of this function? For domain, look at the span of the function along x-axis. For domain, look at the span of the function along y-axis. Domain, range. Domain, range. Understood? So domain, you said all real numbers. I agreed with you. What about range? This is not the range, by the way. This is what? This is what? Co-domain. Co-domain. Domain, co-domain. Now I am asking you what? Range. range. Absolutely, Anjali. Its range is actually, I, I just write it as a short form like this, RF. I will normally use uh, these symbols RF to signify range of a function. DF to domain of a function. Okay. So don't ask me what is RF and all. So RF is going to be all positive real numbers. Can I write it like this? Hope you are aware of the symbols which we use. R, N, W, Z. What is Z used for? Integers. I is also used for integers. I plus means positive integers. Okay. R plus means positive real numbers. <coughs> so range is going to be R plus. Is that fine? What is this point called? Are you going to calculate something? In case of a parabola, what is this called? It's called a Vertex of the parabola. Is that fine? Okay. This point is called the vertex of the parabola. Again, you have a dedicated chapter on parabola in conic sections coming up in class 11 for you. I will speak in detail about this. Okay. Now, I have certain questions for, for you to answer. So we just now saw the graph of y is equal to x square and it was like this. Assuming its domain is all real numbers and codomain is also all real numbers. I would like all of you to tell me if I have to plot this graph, how would it look like? What do you think, Shushan? Kirtana. Take your time. Shift. Do some analysis. Shift towards the right. What will shift towards the right? Graph? The graph will shift towards the right. So Shares is saying that if I have to draw the graph of x minus 1 square, it would become somewhat like this. Yes. How many of you agree with that? That means your vertex will shift from 0, 0 to 1, 0, right? That's what you're saying, Chris? Is this correct? Okay, so we have another answer. It will shift down. Yes, is outrightly rejecting your claim. 
What do you think? Change is correct just because it comes from Apple. Correct. Neha, what do you think? I don't think so. Please challenge somebody's answer. If you are accept, expect, uh, accepting the answer, tell me why it is correct. If you are not, tell me why it is not correct. Ananya, you can't think. Okay. At this point, at least, this guy is saying that the vortex will come. Okay. So, initially when x was 0, y was 0? Correct? The vortex position initially was 0, 0, right? What does it mean? It means when x is 0, my y is also 0, correct? Now, in the present diagram which Shreyas has suggested, he is saying that when x is 1, y is 0. So when x is 1, is y is 0? At least he is correct with respect to that. Yes sir. No? But that doesn't mean the answer that he has given is completely correct. Only well, that one point satisfied it may not be the other case. Now common sense says that if I had to get a value of y as 1, in the previous graph I had to put x value also as 1 or minus 1. But to get the same value of y in case of the second graph as 1, I have to put e either my x as 0 or my x as 2. So to get a value of y is 1, either I have to pay, either I have to put x as 0 or y as 2. So 0 or x as 2. Right? This is your value of y is equal to 1. Let's say. Right? So what he said is absolutely correct. The blue one would be the graph of y is equal to x minus 1 the whole square. Now no points for guessing the graph of y equal to this is the y equal to x plus 1 the whole square. How would be the graph of this? Now, with the same logic, now your graph will actually, which error should I choose right? The graph will shift on this side. That means the vertex will now come at minus 1 comma 0. Understood? Now, here comes the rule for you. What's the rule? This rule basically says, in any function, when I say any function means any function, not only with a parabola, not only for a parabola, but even for a line, even for a trigonometric function, even for a logarithmic function, even for an exponential function, even for any special function, whatever function you can think of in this world, the rule is this rule, which says that if you replace your x with x plus h, h being a positive quantity then the graph will shift h units to the left h units to the left that's what happened over here when I replaced x with x plus 1 my graph shifted 1 units to the left position so from your side left position if you replace your x with x minus h, again h being a positive quantity, your graph will shift h units to the right. Your graph will shift h units to the right. Is this rule understood? And you can actually apply it to any graph. Let's say, can I move to the next slide? Let's say, you know the graph of y is equal to x. Yes or no? Everybody knows it. How does it look like? It looks like a straight line like this. Correct? Arrow signifies it indefinitely keeps on going. The moment I say, hey, draw the graph of x minus 4. So if you move this 4 units down, won't it appear like this? Won't it appear like this? Yes or no? 
Now this point and this point, the shift will be of 4 units. That's why it ends up cutting a negative intercept as you can see, minus 4 is your y intercept. So my point here is that any function in the world, that rule is going to be holding true. Understood? Okay. Chal, we'll return back to the same graph. Now my question is, Now I replace my y with y minus 1. It's, uh, it, it, x square only moves 1, I mean the vertex. This graph, original graph, black one, will move where? 1 unit up. Uh, uh, 1 unit up. Uh, okay, Krishna. Krishna is not contributing today. So Shares is saying that the same graph will go 1 unit up. Is he true? Is he correct? Why? Because if you see, this is another way of saying x square plus 1. Now this is not x plus 1 whole square. There is a difference. Oh, we know that. x plus 1 whole square and x square plus 1 are not the same thing. Correct? So, Shears is claiming that the graph of x square plus 1 is the graph of y equal to x square shifted one unit up. Is he correct? Is correct because if you put initially when you had x is 0, y will also be 0, but now when your x is 0, y will now become a 1. So for the same x equal to 0 point, y will now assume a value as 1. So its vertex will shift to which position? 0, 1. Correct? So now the graph will appear something like this hanging in the air. Okay? This point will have a coordinate of 0, 1. One. Understood? What will happen if I ask you to plot the graph of y plus 1 equal to x square? Where will be the vertex now? 0, 0, minus 1. So, can I make a rule out of it? Can I say that? Can I append this rule and say that? If you replace If you replace Y with Y plus H Of course H is again a positive quantity The graph will go H units down and when you replace your y with y minus h, the graph will go h units up. Right? So, playing with x, shifts the graph sideways. Playing with y, shifts the graph up and down. Understood? Can I combine these two rules and give you a problem? Will you be able to solve it? Okay. Sure. So this is a handout which I am going to anyways give it to you. Okay.